Nihilophobia, the fear of nothingness, of emptiness, of a void and meaningless universe. Now what sort of weird phobia did this blue AI invent this time, you might be asking. And my answer to that is that it's 3 AM right now and I'm in an existential mood and I'm taking you along for a ride. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Humans are biased to believe that most space is not empty. And they're right. Take a cubic meter of air next to you, and under a magic microscope you could count up to 10 trillion trillion molecules. The reason it looks empty is because the human eye evolved to have photoreceptors that absorb wavelengths of light that can freely travel through air without getting absorbed in the process. If for some reason humans only had X-ray vision, they wouldn't see much of anything because the atmosphere would be highly opaque. But let's travel to outer space and take a sample of a metric cube from there. Surely it shouldn't have more than a random atom or two in there. Oh. Even the interplanetary medium isn't that empty, with most of these particles coming from solar wind. So then let's get really far away from the sun, in some empty pocket of our galaxy. If we check a metric cube of nothingness here, we find roughly 100,000 particles. Much less than previously, but still not empty enough. For that, we have to leave the galaxy and travel really really far away. Welcome, the intergalactic medium. If you're lucky, here you could maybe find one or two particles in a cubic meter of space. That shouldn't be too surprising, as the universe had 13 billion years to coalesce itself into galaxies and suck all the particles out of the intergalactic regions through gravity. That's quite empty, but is there anything emptier? You alone on a Friday night does not count. Turns out there is. Welcome, the cosmic voids. They form when galaxies drift away from each other and leave a huge gaping hole of nothingness in between. One of the biggest discovered is the Boötes Void. Colloquially referred to as the Great Nothing, or my productivity after installing Factorio. And that's a wrong picture, what you see here is the Barnard 68 Nebula, which is always mistakenly used to depict voids on the internet. I get that it's dark and ominous, but given that a void is empty, you should be able to see right through it, unlike through dark nebulas. But back to the Boötes Void. It is stupidly large, 330 million light years across. And in all that space, there are only 60 galaxies. Normally we should expect thousands, not 60. Given the Drake equation, there are still probably thousands of alien civilizations living inside the void. Imagine how lonely they must feel, having spawned in the least populated server in the observable universe. But little known fact, we also live in a void. Not only an existential one. Our Milky Way is part of the KBC void, also known as the local hole. This incredibly creative name is due to the local group being part of it, which is made up of the galaxies closest to us. It also happens to be the largest supervoid that we know of, at 2 billion light years across. But don't confuse the local hole void with the local void void, which is another smaller void lying adjacent to the local group. I'm having enough of these voids, let's get to the next topic. Is there such a thing as true physical nothingness? Can you take a cubic meter of space-time and vacuum away all the particles from the inside? Yes you can, but the question is, will you get true nothingness? No. Quantum physics time. Every point in space is filled with fluctuating quantum fields, such as the photon field, the electron field and so on. Even in a vacuum with no particles, there is still residual energy inside these fields, known as zero-point energy. This means that the perfect vacuum has a non-zero energy level, and that this residual energy gives rise to quantum fluctuations out of apparent nothingness. These quantum fluctuations can result in virtual particle-antiparticle pairs spawning in and disappearing just as quickly. For all intents and purposes, these virtual particles essentially do not exist, except in a couple of instances. One of these instances is the death of freaking black holes. The short explanation is that if such a pair spawns right at the frontier of a black hole, it can be broken apart by the insane gravity, with one half falling in and the other escaping. This forces the virtual particles to become real, and thus consumes a bit of the hole's energy in the process. Over a metric crapton of time, this will shrink the black hole until it's gone. So as weird as it might sound, empty space is the deadly enemy of the most terrifying monsters in our universe. But this is not the most important use case of quantum fluctuations. Keep them in mind, as we'll return to them at the end. An important concept in Nietzsche's philosophy was eternal recurrence. He believed that our lives would repeat infinitely, detail for detail, failure for failure, and happy moment for happy moment. 
His conviction in this idea was based on the cosmological scientific consensus at that time. Many believed that the universe was static and eternal, and in such a thermodynamic system, given eternal time, all the particle compositions and interactions will happen an infinite amount of times, including this current reality. Nowadays, our cosmological consensus has drastically changed. We know that the universe had a beginning and is continuously expanding. Thus Nietzsche's eternal recurrence concept falls flat. Or does it? As much as our understanding of the cosmos has advanced, so has it created many more questions. Our best predictive models show that the universe will die of old age over a gargantuan amount of time by slowly cooling down and expanding. As of now, our universe has not even lived 1% of its lifetime. In fact, it has lived much, much, much less than that. But that's not quite a fair representation, because for the vast majority of its lifetime, our universe will be in its black hole era and dark era. Stars will only exist for a blink in this grand time frame. Once star formation ceases in around 100 trillion years, most of what will be left are dwarf stars and black holes. The dwarves will either fall into the black holes or slowly decay as will the holes themselves through Hawking radiation, but over unimaginably long time scales. That's when the universe enters the dark era, with only photons and leptons traveling around. Eventually, those two will lose their energy, and the universe will reach its lowest energy state, the heat death, a state in which entropy is at its highest. At this point, nothing can happen. No particles can interact, no energy can be exchanged, no time can pass. Literally the concept of time would lose all meaning as time requires events to happen that it can be measured against. With no meaningful concept of time or space, we have reached true nothingness, the eternal void, where nothing will ever happen again, and no one will be there to remember the story of the little apes on the pale blue dot. Wait, what's that? Quantum fluctuations are here to save the day and spare us from eternal nothingness. This quantum volatility still permeates the fabric of space-time, even though it almost never manifests itself, and when it does, it's only by spawning a pair of virtual particles that disappear as fast as they appeared. But here is the important bit, we have infinite time. And with infinite time, anything that can happen will happen an endless amount of times. And you know what has a non-zero probability of occurring? Quantum fluctuations manifesting themselves in such a specific structure that they recreate a human brain with electrical activity and the exact neural pathways that you have right now, statistically likely to happen in 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 50 years. That brain might instantly decay, but it might also have time to generate consciousness for just a split moment and experience existence. Your conscious experience right now could be a virtual brain in an eternal void hallucinating all the memories you hold. And frankly, if our ideas are correct and this is the case, it is infinitely more likely that you are in fact such a Boltzmann brain generated out of quantum randomness, than that you are one of the 117 billion humans that have ever lived. So maybe Nietzsche was not that wrong with his idea of eternal recurrence. But how about we wait around even longer? So much longer that the Boltzmann timeframe can be rounded down to zero. 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 56 years long. Your mortal brains cannot comprehend this number and that is okay, just think of it as infinity. Statistically after this much time, quantum tunneling could generate new inflationary events, resulting in new big bangs, some similar to ours, most completely different, and certainly some that are the exact same as ours. Perhaps then, our image of existence is currently skewed. We think of our big bang as the beginning of everything, when it could be just one instance in an infinite queue. Then the true nature of space-time is eternal darkness and emptiness, with only some insignificant specks of existence sprinkled in between. We might be an anomaly, a spark of ephemeral light in otherwise eternal darkness. I warned you it would turn existential. What is this? A new Big Bang about to happen already. Oh, it's the Boltzmann logo of our today's sponsor, Brilliant. They offer a vast array of interactive lessons ranging from math and data analysis to programming and AI, all designed to engage you in active learning instead of passive reading that makes your eyelids want to shut down. Remember how I mentioned earlier that the human brain is not good at comprehending infinities? Brilliant's Integral Calculus course can help mold your brain into understanding such abstract math concepts and much more. Brilliant's first principles approach builds a solid foundation of understanding, making their hands-on problem-solving method six times more effective than traditional lecture videos. Crafted by experts from top institutions like MIT and Caltech, their lessons seamlessly fit into your schedule, 
helping you develop a powerful daily learning habit in just minutes a day, offering a far more enriching alternative to mindless scrolling and promoting both personal and professional growth. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash science file or click on the link in the description, and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.